I had played a residency at the Whiskey A Go Go in, this would have been in kind of late 72. And it was a four night residency and one night John Lord was there, another night Richie Blackmore was there and I'm going to my friends in, in, in Trapeze, Mel and Dave, I said, oh, they, 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 they must like our band, you know. And then, you know, then they all came except Roger and Ian, and I'm going, I had no idea. I hadn't. And then uh, a few months later, we did the Marquee Club in London, the Omar in Wardour Street, and John Lord came. And a few months later, we played again, and Richie came, and I'm going, oh, they really love our band, don't they? I had no idea. And then, uh, in sort of, April of 73, Trapeze were playing in Baltimore, Maryland, and I got a call from John Lord saying, we're in New York, we're playing Madison Square Garden tomorrow or the next day. Can you come up here? I said, I think so. I flew there. I still had no idea. I swear to you, I had no idea. They were checking me out. And um, I saw them play. I stood on the side of the stage and watched them play. I'm going, Oh, this is incredible, this is incredible, fantastic. And the next day, we had a meeting. Uh, they were there, except Ian Gillen and Roger Glover, and I has, still had no idea. I mean, you gotta believe me, I had no idea. And um, they asked me if I'd like to play bass guitar. I said, excuse me? Um, uh, are you sure? Uh, 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 I sing too, yes, but we're gonna ask Paul Rogers to sing, and a little bit of my brain went, ooh, Paul Rogers, now there's a really great singer. Maybe if I played bass and just get the opportunity to sing with one of my favorites, it would be wonderful. So I said, I'm in. Purple were making an album called Stormbringer in LA, and we were staying at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. And it was, we'd been recording all day, and, and I was with Ronnie Wood and Keith Moon and Alice Cooper, and we were in my room doing what we were doing, you know, and um, I get a, a ring on my door, and in walks Angie Bowie, you know, and, and she said, she cornered me, she said, my husband would love to meet you. So she took me up there with Ronnie Wood, and there was David Bowie. Um, he'd, he'd actually been seeing, uh, California Jam had been seen on TV the week before. He'd, he was going through his blue-eyed soul period, and he was um, asking me how I transposed the look of a rock guy into the sound of an R&B singer. And he was uh, deeply uh, motivated by that. I'm in the back of this ambulance, right? And um, the guy's driving, and I said to the guy in the driver's seat, oh my God, this is awful, but I said, by the way, I'm not like the others that sit back here. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be okay. And the guy turned around and started beating the crap out of my legs, saying, shut the fuck up, you piece of shit, you worthless piece of junky ass cocaine shit. I never did heroin, by the way, but the light went on. The light that many of us have when we get clean and sober. The light didn't go on at first in 91. It went on again in 97. It went on completely. I was, I, he was telling me, I'm just a human being that fell. I need help. And you should be lucky to be alive. And the light went on. He told me the truth. He told me the truth. 